Close your eyes and take a couple of good, long, deep in and out breaths. Watch the breath all the way in, watch it all the way out. If your mind starts to wander off, just bring it back to the breath again. Try to make the breath comfortable. Ask, ask yourself, if long breathing isn't comfortable, what would be comfortable? How about shorter, or short in and long out, or long in and short out? How about more shallow, heavier, lighter, faster, slower? You can experiment with the way you breathe to see what feels really good. After all, the breath is the force of life. It's what keeps the body and the mind together. And it only stands to reason that if this force is uncomfortable, it's not going to be good for the body, it's not going to be good for the mind. But if it's comfortable, if that sense gives a sense of well-being, a sense of refreshment, okay, then it's actually helping the body and helping the mind to look after the breath. All too often we just let it do its own thing while we're interested in other things. But this is one of the Buddha's discoveries, is if you pay attention to the breath, you can learn a lot about the body, you can learn a lot about the mind. In particular, you can learn where the mind is causing itself unnecessary suffering. The things we think about, the things we talk about, the things we do that create burdens for the mind. Even though we want to find happiness, everything we do is for the sake of happiness and pleasure. Yet so often our actions, our words, our deeds, thoughts, end up causing suffering and stress. Why is that? What are we not paying attention to? Well, one thing, we're not paying attention to what's going on in the present moment, because that's where the mind is making its decisions. So when you're with the breath, you've got an anchor. You know you're here in the present. And that's where you can watch your own mind. When you can watch your own mind, then you can get more control over it. Because it is the force that's shaping your life. So you want to make sure that it's putting things in good shape. Again, you can't always trust it to do the right thing, because after all, there is greed in there, there's, a, there's delusion, there's aversion, there's anger, sometimes there's jealousy. All kinds of unskillful things can come slipping in when you're not paying attention. So try to bring your attention to the breath as much as you can, and keep it here. And this is where you can watch things well, watch things clearly. And this way you can take more control of your life, so that you don't simply act on urges and then try to figure out afterwards why it happened. You can see it coming, because you're right here. And when it's coming and going to push you in the wrong direction, you can learn how to sidestep it. If it's pushing you in the right direction, okay, you can learn how to encourage that kind of thinking. It's not that you don't think at all when you meditate. You do some thinking, but you learn how to think skillfully in a way that brings happiness, rather than in a way that brings unintended suffering. So try to get yourself familiar with the breath, all its different ins and outs, so you're in a better place to get more control over your life. <laughs>